Hello, this is Andrew from PayPal again, and today I'm going to show you how to integrate PayPal on a uh, merchant site from scratch. So this video will demonstrate uh, a merchant that currently does not have any sort of PayPal integration. And we're going to integrate the latest products, which are the checkout uh, JavaScript, as well as the REST APIs. And this is going to be for the express checkout shortcut button. So first we're just going to take a quick look at the merchant site. If you see here, it's a nice little shopping cart. Um, we're going to want to place our PayPal button here. Um, if they were to click checkout, it would go to a payment page. Um, after the payment page, you'll have a confirmation page. And then, um, you know, like a final page that just says your order's complete and we'll see that when we get this integrated. So typically in a PayPal integration, when they click our shop cart button, shopping cart button, um, they're gonna go through the PayPal flow and then we're gonna take them directly to the confirmation page because you're gonna use the uh, addresses and all that information um, from PayPal. So you shouldn't need to get any more information from the user. All right, so now we're gonna go take a look at the documentation. So I'm going to go to developer.paypal.com. Uh, I'm going to express checkout documentation. I personally just like to go to the interactive demo to get the code. So here we have um, a typical client side express checkout integration. So I am going to go ahead and copy this code. And now I'm going to go to my cart page on the merchant site. So you'll see here's where we have that or, and here's where we want to place that um, PayPal button afterwards. So I'm just going to paste that in here. So this is directly from the documentation. And I'm using a different JavaScript renders or HTML render, so it's gonna look a little different. All right. So here we have our PayPal button container, and then you'll see that we are gonna give that container ID down here in the uh, PayPal button render call. So that's gonna inject our PayPal button directly into this um, container here. All right, so now we can set an environment. So we're gonna use Sandbox. Um, and here's where you'll put your client IDs for your PayPal REST applications. So if you currently don't have a PayPal REST application, I have a neat little video that'll show you how to generate those. Um, you should see a link in the top right corner. Now you can go ahead and click that and watch that video to create your REST app. So for now, I'm gonna just take my REST app and I only have a sandbox one for right now, so we'll just paste that right in here. All right, I'm gonna remove the commit for this uh, demo as it's not needed. All right, so first off, we have a payment callback. Um, this callback must return um, a PayPal token and then it will actually render the PayPal experience. So we have some helper methods available for you in this callback uh, in the actions object. So you'll see here, just calling actions.payment.create. So that's actually gonna uh, call our REST APIs and create a payment for you. Uh, you don't really have to do anything else at that point. So we're gonna create a payment with a total of one cent, currency USD. Then the second, um, the second important callback here is unauthorized. So this callback is executed uh, after the um, user clicks continue at PayPal. Uh, we execute this callback and you can do whatever you need to do. Um, for this demonstration, since this is kind of a classic merchant page where you have the shopping cart and then a confirmation page, we just want to do a redirect there. 
So I want to do, um, all I need to do there is actions.redirect, which is another helper method. So we're going to return actions.redirect here. Well, you might be asking, where is that going to redirect to? So that's going to redirect to where, wherever, um, whatever URL you put in the create call, uh, which we didn't put anything here. So I'm going to grab that right now and just add my return and cancel URLs. All right. So after they click continue from PayPal, we're just going to redirect, which should take us to this return URL. And just like um, you would in a in your classic shopping cart. Um, the other thing I'm going to add is an on cancel callback, which is called if the user um, closes down the, the pop up. So in that case, we just want to call actions.redirect as well, which would just um, it would just re redirect the user to the actual cancel URL here instead of the, the return URL. And then the very last thing I'm going to add is an on error callback. Uh, this callback is called if there's an actual error anywhere um, from PayPal or in any of these callbacks. Um, and I'm just going to console log it for now, but you'll want to handle this in some other fashion. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's take a look to see what actually happens. Um, when we when we submit this uh, when we do this redirect all right so you'll see once um, we go through that PayPal process um, we're gonna do a redirect to that confirmation URL and here you'll see get confirmation so that's my route for uh, the confirmation URL so I'm actually using the PayPal rest SDK for node.js here uh, you could write this from scratch if you want to look at the documentation for the REST APIs. You can also use one of our SDKs. Uh, this is using the Node SDK. So um, I'm just setting up the Node SDK here. Um, and then I'm executing the Get Payment API, which is right here. So I'm doing a Payment Get request. So you could take a look at that in our documentation, but basically it just returns um, all the information about a payment based off of pay ID. So you'll see here, I'm just sending a, I'm looking at the, uh, the return URLs query parameters for a payment ID because PayPal attaches the payment ID to the URL on the redirect. So you'll see that when we click the actual button and then I'm executing this um, payment get API. And with the response from that, I'm just building um, an object to pass to my view um, and all this information will be displayed in the view which is your confirmation page. All right so let's go take a look to see how that actually works. Restart my application in case I made any changes. All right so when I refresh my page we'll see my PayPal button here which was created via the JavaScript. All right, so now when I click the PayPal button, you'll see the PayPal pop up. And I'm going to log in with my Sandbox buyer account. And when I click continue here, that unauthorized callback is going to be called and it's just going to do a, a redirect to the return URL. So we'll see that here. All right, so now we're back to our return URL and we built that view based off the information provided from PayPal. And you'll see in the URL, there's a payment ID, which PayPal attached to the uh, return URL. There's a token and there's a payer ID. So the payer ID and the pay 
I payment ID are going to be needed uh, to execute the actual last API call, which is the execute payment, which will finalize the payment for us. And if we look back to our server code here, um, when I click on that this button here for place order, it's going to go to it's going to do a form post to scratch execute. So when I look at the execute post here at that point you'll see that um, it's calling this execute function which calls the PayPal API rest API for payment execute with the pay ID which is that pay dash ID and then I'm also sending in the payer ID in the body of the request which if you looked at the documentation for the rest API that's what's required and then I am waiting for the response from that API call. And once again, I'm um, constructing my view of done with some information that I got back from the execute, which is uh, a transaction ID, an amount, um, a status, and a timestamp. All right, and the last thing, since this is a client-side integration and we are actually building that payment create call in the JavaScript, um, you're going to want to validate that the uh, amounts are the same on the server side uh, before we actually execute the payment. So how are we going to do that? So you're going to have to make some sort of a server call or database lookup to see how much or the amount of the order in your cart. Uh, for now, I just set that amount to... Um, a static value here and then you're going to want to call the uh, PayPal payment get request API and here we're just awaiting the response from it so when we get a response from the payment get API we're just going to check to make sure that the um, amount of the order at PayPal is equal to the amount of the order from your server which will prevent any sort of um, changing of the uh, the amounts in the JavaScript um, before it's sent to PayPal in the client side uh, payment create API. All right. So now when we go back to our application, once again our payer or payer ID and pay ID are in the URL. So we're just going to grab that and send it along. So when I click place order, it creates the payment for me. You'll see I have a transaction ID and amount completed in a timestamp. All right, and that is it for creating a PayPal integration from scratch using the checkout JavaScript and the REST APIs, um, using more of that classic e-commerce checkout where it's a redirect from cart to confirmation to um, sort some sort of a done page. Thanks for watching and look forward to more videos in the near future.